Empty that Nest. was a spinoff. That was uh, Empty Nest. That, another disaster. I My life is filled with these things. Pilots and I do not get along. We did an, I did our audition. I did, I had to read for it. And they said, okay, you're the one. But there wasn't one smile in the room. It was the most bizarre experience. I've never had an audition like that in my whole life where everybody after the reading said, thank you. And I said, uh, oh, oh, you're, you're welcome. Is there anything else? And they said, no. I thought, oh, dear God, well, they hated this. They hated this. I went home, my husband said, and it was, oh, I had gone through heaven and hell to audition. I was on a cruiser doing my show when this audition offer came up. And I went through the rain and sleet and snow and all kinds of stuff just to get to Hollywood, California to do this reading. Well, that's what made it so really insane. And, and, I, and I flew on airplanes and I took boats and, and I was exhausted and I came in the next day and did this reading where everybody said, thank you. <laughs> so my husband calls up, that's right, because he was still in St. Thomas where I left the ship. How did it go? I said, they hated it. He said, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I said, so am I. I said, it was just the most awful, one of the most awful experiences of my life. I got the part. And I said, based on what? <laughs> is that the kind of enthusiasm I'm going to see when I do this thing? And what happened is that Susan Harris, the head writer, got frightfully ill during that one week we were doing, putting the pilot together and couldn't do rewrites, and it really really, really needed rewrites badly. Paul Dooley was playing my husband and I was the lady. And uh, every day they kept changing my character to the extent that by the time we got to do it in front of an audience, I couldn't remember line one because the attitudes had changed so many times. That was the most embarrassing experience. It was so embarrassing because the audience would start to laugh. And I was trying to make light of it and I could not remember my lines. We must have done, I would guess about 15 takes in front of an audience, who then begins to root for you and that makes it worse. And the actresses you know, B, and all of them are in that scene with me and there you can, you can see the tension, saying you can do this Rita, you can do this. And nobody understands why I can't remember my lines. And it's because, and this, this is a peculiar actor's problem that nobody in the world but an actor can truly understand. If, you, if they keep changing your attitudes, not you, but your character's attitudes about things, you no longer know who you're playing. And if you don't know who you're playing, the lines don't come out. They just, the line of dialogue does not come out naturally. Therefore, you forget them. That's what happens. I will never forget that as long as I live. Wow. Amazing. And of course, what happened was that they didn't pick it up. The network didn't pick it up. It was really a very, very bad show. And I, the women in the show hated it. They thought it was just one piece of drivel. But it was because Susan wasn't there to fix it. The TV is all about the fixes, really. You rarely have the same script on Friday that you started out with on Monday. Well, I would guess that, uh, let's see, I did the show with Candace on the breast cancer thing. I played her doctor. And that show changed considerably because she felt that they were being too lighthearted about it. And she was right, and they, they fixed that. But uh, it was a, essentially still the same show. But very often with uh, television, it's this show on Monday, and by the time you get to Friday when you're doing it in front of an audience, it's another show entirely, completely rewritten, usually for the better. but. Um, you have to be, you have to be able to compartmentalize your mind in order to do series television. It's very difficult to do.